Hey guys, what I'd like to do today is talk about the rise of one inch camera sensors on smartphones. Now we have seen one inch sensors on phones in the past, but they are typically few and far between. But that is starting to change. We saw some other phones come out last year with a one inch sensor and there's some more coming out this year with a one inch sensor as well. And one that's been in social media a lot recently is the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. It's got a nice quad camera system at the back and one of which is one inches, 50.3 megapixels. Although they have matched it with a selfie camera at the front, they can only do 1080p at 30 frames per second. Not that it's a terrible camera at the front, it's just weird to match such a powerful camera system at the back with a camera that's kind of weak in comparison at the front. But there you go, this is the Xiaomi 13 Ultra and you can see it's got a big camera setup at the back. But this is by no means the pioneer of this format. If you go back to 2014, Panasonic released the Lumix Smart Camera CM1. Now this technically wasn't a phone, it was more of a kind of camera Android phone hybrid thing, uh, Android 4.4.2. But I, I consider this the granddaddy, the pioneer of this format because it did have you know a, a front screen, it was Android and it had that one inch sensor at the back and you can see that they've kind of marketed this as kind of like a compact camera at the back. They did later release one which was more of a phone with a one inch sensor, so did Sony and more recently we've seen uh, phones such as the Xiaomi 12S Ultra, that's got a one inch sensor and the Vivo X90 Pro Plus, same again. Many of which are, are sharing the same sensor actually. Now as far as sensor size goes, I'm sure you know that you know this is how the, the the world is captured and then the image is generated, etc. If you look on Google Images, you can see there's many comparisons that kind of demonstrate the differences between camera sizes. I think the, the one in Wikipedia is quite good. Um, if you look at this article and then you look at this image, you can see that one over 2.5 inch, that is typically what you would see on a smartphone. That's my Fold 4, I think this is what this has got. And then there's one over 1.8 inch, you'll see one over 1.2 inch you'll see two thirds of an inch, you'll see one inch as well. That's what you see in the RX100 series I've got here. And then you've got the kind of APS-C standards, APS-H and then full frame. But like I was saying, there's a lot of articles coming out telling us about the new phones that are coming out this year with a one inch sensor. This article is actually a few months old at this point, but it did have a good list here of some of the phones that are coming out. As you can see, there's a lot of phones there that have got that uh, sensor. So. Yeah, we're, we're starting to see a lot of new smartphones coming out with a one inch sensor. But what does that mean? Well, you can see here that the sensor sensor sizes here are a little bit smaller, kind of one over 2.5 inch or even smaller than that. This is my RX100 Mark 7. This has a one inch sensor and this punches way above its weight. You would think this you know, wouldn't perform as well as it does, but you can get a really good picture out of this. Now, the camera that I'm using right now to record my overhead camera shot here is the Sony RX10 Mark II. Several years old, but it does have a one inch sensor and you can see that the picture is very good. And this here is APS-C. That's what I'm using for my webcam. It's a A6500 there and I've got the Sony A6000 here and that is an APS-C sensor. And then above that, you've obviously got full frame. So these are both full frame. This is a Sony A7C and this is the, the larger Panasonic S5, but they're both full frame. And you can see the full frame sensor there. Now, as always with technology, there's many factors to consider. Um, certainly when you're talking about you know mirrorless cameras that have got lenses, you have to take the lenses into consideration. You need to take the actual body, you know, the type of camera you're using, the software, etc., into consideration. But generally speaking, the larger sensor produces a higher quality image, lets in more light, better depth of field, better depth of field, and it's just generally a better picture, better video, and better in low light. That's very important as well, and that's what we should see with the larger sensors as well. Now, with smartphones, though. The other consideration is processing. And, you know, over the last few years, certainly the last, you know, four or five years, the improvements in camera quality, you know, picture quality, video quality has been amazing, especially when you consider that they haven't changed the camera sizes, not really anyway. 
and that's quite impressive. In fact, they've they've done it. They've improved smartphone picture and video quality so much that I'm starting to think that this is you know has to be sold. And, and in fact, I think I will sell it because this is the RX100 Mark Seven. It's fantastic for video, fantastic for vlogging. And it's been fantastic for me, but I use this in a very limited way. I tend to use it for kind of B-roll shots in my studio. And the problem with the one inch sensor here is that in low light, that these sensors, the smaller sensors on smartphones actually perform better for what I'm doing in the studio. And that again, that just shows you that with the right processing, with the right CPU behind it, smaller sensors can punch above their weight. Now, with the one inch sensors coming out just now, you might not see a huge difference. You might see, you know, like the Xiaomi 13 Ultra being compared to the iPhone, the latest iPhone with a smaller sensor, and you might think the iPhone looks better. But I think that's going to change in the future. Once they get to grips with the sensor, once, you know, they start doing improvements as far as software and processing and, you know, the camera application, etc. there will come a point, I think, in the next year or so where certain companies will just have to opt for that larger sensor if they want to compete. The problem we've got as a consumer right now is many of these phones with a one inch sensor, they're quite expensive. It's always the same. Whenever you buy a phone, the new technology comes out is more expensive. But as these new phones come out with more, you know, with one inch sensors, we'll hopefully see the price drop down. We'll hopefully see more competition. And one inch sensors, I hope, will be the norm. And one of the reasons I hope is the norm is uh, for video recording, especially, you know, they can do a lot of great things software wise from a, a photograph point of view as far as getting good photographs but smaller sensors always struggle in low light they always struggle at night time for video they always do it's why gopros are terrible at night it's why smartphone selfie cameras are always terrible at night they're just they're just you know the sensors are too small they're not capturing enough light to produce a good image it's a problem that i've had with the rx100 at night time as well it's a problem I've got with my smartphones. It's a problem I've got with uh, my GoPro, like I said there. And low light photographs, low light video would be fantastic. And like I said, you're still going to have problems with a one inch sensor on a smartphone. A one inch sensor isn't going to match what you get with a full frame camera, but it's a step in the right direction. And for me, if I had a phone with a, a one inch sensor, it's, it's starting to make, you know, camera solutions like this a little obsolete for how I use them anyway. And there might become a, you know, there might come a time where four, micro four thirds cameras or, or even APS-C cameras become surplus to requirements because your phone has, you know, taken over all of those photo and video responsibilities. But I just thought I'd talk about this today because we're starting to see more of these one inch sensors coming out. We're starting to see more of these reviews. But just bear in mind that when these reviews come out and they will inevitably compare them to the Google Pixel, to the latest iPhone, the latest Samsung phones, etc. But bear in mind that, especially on a smartphone, the sensor size is just a part of the picture. They have to, you know, do the processing. You have to consider the, the camera app, etc. as well. But all things being equal, if we start seeing these sensor sizes getting larger, we should see better photo quality. We should see better video quality. We should see better quality in night type sh shots, photos or video. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, guys. Give me your thoughts on the latest phones with one inch camera sensors. Would you pay a premium for a phone if the camera sens sensor had a larger sensor, if it, you know, if it bumped up to one inch? Love to hear your thoughts on this, guys. So please do leave a comment below. And until next time, take care.